Hey everyone, Travis Pfeiffer here, Rudros, and we are right after Portland Re-Raise, time for a little recap, and I was lucky to be reached out to and joined by two of the gentlemen in the top 16. So first we have Robert Joy. Robert, how are you, sir? I'm great. Thanks, Travis. Oh, absolutely. And joining us as well is Mike Peterson. Mike, how are you? Doing pretty good, thanks. All right, so we've got the tail of the tape of these two fine gentlemen. Robert, on day one, uh, took second place overall. He went six and one. As a matter of fact, he was on stream. If you watch the stream, he was running a deck called You're Fired. And this deck was kind of the Braska summon list. It had, I think, 30 summons in it. Just something absolutely crazy. We'll throw it up on screen here in a moment. And then Mike... Also on day one, he took 13th overall. He went 5-2. and two, And you were basically running Sam Prime's Ice Earth list, correct? Yep, I'd watched some of his stuff and uh, tested it like five or six times before playing it. <laughs> and then gave it a go. It was great. Did you change anything or was it an exact replica? Exact exact replica. I figured I couldn't do any better than, than what he did with all the games he put in. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, well then, Robert, I'm going to go to you first since yours is a, a little more interesting just in the sense that, you know, I see this deck list. And we've kind of had things like this since Opus 9. I don't know how long you gentlemen have been playing, but that's when a kind of fire mill control list first came out with Afrida and adding all these efforts in and da-da-da. I really like the Afrida choice too because it gives you a little bit of monster hate, which people aren't really expecting in fire. So if you've seen a Tomos or a Biblos or anything of that, what made you pick this list? Well, I built this list. I started playing about a year ago, so I'm pretty new, okay. really, uh, about Opus 14. And... I built this list on my own, um, just out of the blue, and I was like, you know, it'd be cool to have a whole bunch of fire cards together that are summons, because I think doing damage is cool. And so I built this list, and I tested it out a little bit, and not this exact list. I built something similar to this after, I want to say, right after Opus 15 came out, when the Efridos were reprinted in 15. Yeah. And... I built it and I won most of my games with it and my daughter had just started playing at that time. If you can't tell, I'm I got a daughter that's old enough to play. <laughs> and uh, she was like, oh, I love that. You're you're winning. I want to play that. And I'm like, okay, cool. So she played it a little bit and she was winning and she's like, oh, this is awesome. And she's one where if she's winning, she loves it and she's not winning, she hates it. So <laughs> I was like, okay. And I, I essentially sold her the deck for like 30 bucks. There was like hardly any expensive cards because yeah. as you look at the deck list, there's one legend in the entire list. Which is Axtar. They're all cheap. Yeah. yeah, it's Axtar. That's it. And... um and it wasn't the exact list you see now, but it was very similar. And so I was like, okay, I, I gave it to her. She played it for a little bit. And then some people at the locals figured out how to get around it. And then she's like, ah, I'm good. And then she started working. Anyway, she hasn't played for a while. So then um, I have been playing Guardians since nice. about good choice. March this year. Love that deck. <laughs> since March this year, I've been playing Guardians. I took it to the Florida re-raise. I, I flew out to Florida and played there. And... I did fairly well. I ended up in 24th place. I thought that was really good. I got four and three, and it was my first major tournament I'd ever been to for any card game. I'd never played any card games before. Yeah. So this was really new for me, and I was so excited. And anyway, so then people after the Florida re-raise in my local group were like, oh, your Guardians, keep keep hitting that. Do Guardians. It'll be great. Yeah. I'm like, okay. And so I kept trying to try to maybe tweak my Guardians deck, try to make it better, and it wasn't working. Everyone's keep just crushing me. I was really hmm. having a hard time, especially against Control. And yeah. Guardians is kind of a slow build. You have to kind of build up to your power and get a lot of cards on at once or don't play them. And so um, I was losing. And I was like, you know what? Four days before the event on Wednesday, I was or three days before the event, I was like, I'm going to switch it up. Going back to fire. I called my daughter up. I said, bring your deck over. I want it. And so she did. And I changed out a few cards, but maybe a total of like 10 cards. And that's what I, and I was like, I'm taking it. I'm going for it. And my goal was, I'm going to surprise people. Nobody sees 30 summons coming, right? Yeah. Not going to happen. No, no. Especially since Mastery got banned. Everybody's yeah. like, oh, run away from summon decks. That's bad now. Well, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a surprise. So... I think everyone I played against was definitely caught off off guard. When I've got five summons in the break zone after there's only five cards in my break zone, and I'm already able to hit a Frida's all three abilities, and mm -hmm. they're like, "Oh no, that's that's because just hitting one of hers is like okay, it's it's yeah. a seven K summon. If you hit all three every time and they don't remove your break zone, it's di so dangerous." Mike, did you? I'm assuming you, you two tested together. Did you get to test oh, against yeah. this? I uh, made him play uh, against twins for two weeks in a row, 
Oh, wow. And he kept on adding more Jexen to try to do something. But it was like, whatever, I, we get twins turn one and it would just be basically over. Yep. And so like after that, he was like, I'm not, I don't want to play this anymore. So it was just twins after twins after twins. And then he got to test against twins with this other deck and uh, he decked it. And that's when he figured out, wait a minute, this is a mill deck, right? Yeah, like, yeah. And so luckily he got that test like two days before the event. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even realize it was like a mill deck design. I thought, oh, I'm going to kill their forwards and then attack with my forwards. But that's usually not how it turns out. Yeah. They kill my forwards, and then we just go with no forwards for four turns in a row. Yeah. And, and it's just, you just roll through. And and the good thing about this deck build is there's hardly any search or draw. So I'm almost always going to have more cards than my opponent. Nice. That, that's where you want to be. Uh, Mike, I'll ask about your list. Obviously, this is the list that won the Omaha Re-Raise event. This is Sam Primes. What specifically made you want to take this one? Was it just because of how well it did against Soirees, or was there something else? I couldn't beat it with anything that I was playing, and I didn't want to play Soirees. Mm. That was basically it. Like I, I played Soirees with uh, Twins, and I had trouble. And then I played against this deck with Twins, and I had trouble. And I wanted to play Twins, but I couldn't beat it at home, playing uh, just messing around. So I started testing this against Twins with another one of our friends, and I just kept beating him. I 5 0 like. Every single really? game, I'll just take it easily. Yeah. Can you give me and more like, insight you, on that? Because I, I don't know. Twins are so strong. Like, what, what, what about this deck? Let's that clean them up. Is what were people he, just attacking into Zalira or Hecaton or what was it? He wasn't. He wasn't playing backups at first. He was just trying to go uh, Paul and Porm quickly, and I would just board yeah. wipe, and he wouldn't have anything to stop uh. it. Right? Like he wouldn't have Amat in hand, or I'd get him to start discarding. He just never could catch back up. Hmm. So like that's kind of how it went. When he started playing forwards, I would just get set up. And then you just have to start discarding cards. And he dropped that out and I'd board wipe, right? There's just so many board wipes. So he couldn't really stick anything. I mean, I could just ignore I could ignore them and then have out Arcanist and then just keep him from attacking. That's true. So I just sit there and do nothing until I could board wipe. And then he just can catch back up. Okay, interesting. That makes sense. That's very interesting. Awesome. So uh, obviously this is the one you took to the event. Did you run into a lot of soiree? Uh, so you went five and two. What decks gave you trouble? Obviously you crapped okay. on five decks or at least beat them. What were the two that gave you issues? So the first round was against Fire Ice Control from uh, NorCal, mm. and I wasn't expecting it. Um, basically, we went to time, and he was at I was at six damage, he was at four, and it looked like he was going to win, so I conceded. So that was the first first round loss. Gotcha. And then the one that I lost to was actually Soares because I got excited and dropped Orphan early when I should have just been setting up uh, Skill Toad. Mm. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to drop Orphan, but I gave him a target to get rid of, and then I just could never catch back up because I, I yeah. put too much into Skill Toad like turn or uh, into Orphan turn turn two. Did, so, you, did you get immediately punished by like Elvis or Merold or? Yes, like I immediately got punished by. I think it was he dropped an Elvis, he destroyed it, and then he just started he just started like tearing my hand apart. Yeah. He dropped Erwin, and then Merold came out, and I couldn't figure out like, okay, who am I? What am I gonna get rid of? Right, like so I didn't have any good choices. I, I just I got behind too fast. Yeah. I'll see. The ahead. ones that I beat though that were interesting. The most interesting deck that we both played. Robert played it round one, and I played it round two. Was a Water Earth Rudia Porum Neo X Death times three. Oh really? Wow. <laughs> So like we were both afraid of that, but just just had to keep powering through and like lightning basically basically won won me that I, I was able to attack in and keep bouncing it and then sacrificing something else. Mm. I don't do I know the other decks that I played against. I actually took a list. I kept a list of uh. Nice, list sure. Of if you got them. All right. So first round was Fire Ice Control. Second was uh Water Earth. Third was Fire Ice Aggro. I actually played against uh, Dusky's uh, son th in round three. Oh okay. Um, fourth round was Ice Discards, like a Sephiroth Vein build. Uh, fifth round was Sori, I lost that, and then seventh was Guardians, or sixth was Guardians, and seventh was Avalanche. So, like, I only played Sori's once, and I don't uh -huh. really think that many people were, were running it. I, so before I took this to the event, I actually tested a, a build of Sori's with uh, Emperor, and it was really good. Emperor yeah. and Sophie, right? Like, so the Emperor Sophie list that someone else played and did, did pretty well, but uh, I, mean, I, just, I couldn't beat this. So that's the only reason I took it. And I watched some of the videos, too, like the deck tech, and then I watched your last video, and that stuff really helped me figure out, like, how to play the deck correctly. <laughs> and then the only times I lost is when I didn't because I got excited and went too aggressive when I could have just sat back and done nothing and built, built backups. Yeah. Yeah, I know Sam and Muhammad were very passive when they were, you know, there are no rush to do anything because as far as they're concerned, they're going to win that late game. Uh, how many soirees do you think were there overall? I'd say at least like of the regular builds from the people in Portland, like two to three at least. There's obviously more than that. Kind of yeah. the Avalanche one, probably more like four to five. The other story list that made it to top was from Portland as well so that was one of the the guys kind of in our extended play group gotcha um how many did you see robert besides that one there's the one i played on day two he was from portland and then the i call it the zombie avalanche and uh soiree list that won yeah um, 
But other than that, that's all I saw. So I was expecting to play soirees at least two or three times, yeah. and I only the only soiree deck, full full blown soiree deck that I played was on day two, that one that I lost. Mm-hmm. So okay, so let's jump to that. Tell me about that list. Did it? Obviously, we didn't get to see it on stream. Was it close? Did you get two would Was it two and one? Was it a blowout? What happened? He did 2-0 me, and it was interesting because, you know, in day one, you don't get to see everybody else's deck list. So yeah. it's all a surprise. You sit down and you just play against a, a blank slate. Yeah. And then, so for day two, everybody gets your deck list. And I knew that I'd be at a disadvantage when everybody saw that I had 30 summons. Yeah. So um, I was like, man, what am I going to do to deal with this? And, you know, the, the reason that I got ended up losing now... I wouldn't say that he stomped me, but he definitely won um, pretty handily. And the reason was because his soirees, I couldn't hit him for 8k and kill him because both games he was able to get Luca on the field, mm. uh, turn two, turn three, and that extra 1k That's huge. made it so that now I've got to play two damage cards to kill everything instead yeah. of one because I don't have hardly anything in there that does enough to kill a 9k in one hit. Uh, or I'm paying five for it, which is too expensive. Yeah. I almost never cast the 5k if it's there for the EX. So the um, I was just always behind in CP. I couldn't keep up. Yeah. And and he, so we would. So he he was smart about it. If he had just played like a normal soiree, like where you kind of rush in and go go strong, I probably would have beat him. But he knew that I had so much damage, there was no point in playing forwards. Yeah. So he was just sitting there doing nothing building his backup line, and there was a couple of turns, both games, where both of us just discarded a card at the end of turn. We're like, your, <laughs> wow. your turn. Play very, nothing. Very passive. Yeah. And well, then, I overheard yeah. somebody say the next, on day two, I overheard someone say, I, I thought I had to do stuff, like on day one. I don't have to do anything. I just have to sit there. <laughs> so that's basically, I think, the what they played against you that time. Yeah. Well, yeah, he was, he was really smart about it. Yeah, we, we saw a lot of that, too, in Dallas and... A little bit in Omaha as well. I, I didn't rewatch the Omaha stream, so I don't know what was featured on there. But I know in Dallas there were several decks, particularly against that heavy burst EX Soiree deck, people just wouldn't attack. So like, man, I don't want to just give you, you know, the free Remora, the free Leviathan, whatever it is. So I'm cool. I'll just sit here and just chill and not attack. That's very surprising. Yeah, I had a few people um, in our local group. They they were they would sit there and they've got a free hit on me. No mm-hmm. no way for me to block. No forwards out. And they're like, I'm not going to attack because I know you're going to hit an EX and kill me. Yeah. So you're Just newer. The fear factor. You're newer to the game, Robert. Mike, how long have you been playing? About the same time, but I played Magic for many years. So you have other so card experience. Yeah. So I want both of you to tell me, what do you think about that? That feeling of like, hey, I can actually get a free attack. There's no blockers or anything, but people aren't. Do- how, how does that strike you? I, you know, when I started. EX burst weren't as punishing, so people were a lot more free to just swing in. And lately, I've definitely felt like, I just don't even want to attack you because, you know, I'm just afraid of this burst. And I have to, well, let me hear what your opinions are on that. So how do you how do you both feel about it? So, like I said, I'm pretty new to card games in general, and especially this. And for me, I would never not attack if I had a free hit. Mm-hmm. I, that's just not an option for me. If there's no forwards and there's no reason for me not to attack, I'm going to swing and just hope for the best. Yeah. Unless I... It, Unless there's, unless losing that forward is going to like lose me the game, sure. I might not do it, right? If there's a huge risk, but I'm a big risk, big, big reward kind of guy yeah. for the cards. So I'm the one that's going to build the 30 summon deck. I'm the guy that's going to build a deck around the X death from Opus 3 and say, I'm going to go all in. Grand if I cross. can hit a special and remove everything, yeah. it's totally worth it. <laughs> that, that's how I roll, so I'm I'm all about taking the chance and going and seeing if it works. What about you, Michael? I, it depends on what I'm playing. If I'm playing twins, I'm waiting a couple of turns for them to grow big enough, and I'm not going to get hit with like eight or nine k. Yeah. But usually, yeah, I'll, I'll attack in I, unless it's like this. If I know the list, I know it's like the story where it's got like so many ex, ex bursts, and I can't do anything about it. it depends, I guess it depends on what forward is out, and if I if I really want to lose it. But I'm a little bit more hesitant after watching the re raises. And being like, wait a minute, why aren't they attacking in? They have like all this all this time they can attack in. Thinking of it more of like a mid-range where I'm just gonna keep attacking in and getting damage and shipping away. And then understanding that now the players are looking at it as I need to win in like two or three turns or something like that. Like it, it that changed my mindset a little bit. Hmm. But I, I probably still attack in more often than I should, right? Like a little bit too aggressively. Yeah. Just just because I get excited, right? Like and it's like I, if I don't know what's in their deck, then I'm probably more likely to attack in because I don't know what to be afraid of. Yeah. 
No, that's that's a fair point. Okay, so let me ask you about your day two then. You had the Ice Earth. What did you end up facing for your day two uh, top 16? Mono Wind against Josh, who, who's been playing that deck for a long time and, and knows uh, okay. it in and out. And this and is the I had, Fat Chocobo version, right? Fat Chocobo, yeah. I hadn't tested enough. I hadn't tested it all against Mono Wind. The only other, other time I had played Mono Wind was with Turbo Ridia against him at the reunion, uh, which was like a couple of uh, like a month or so earlier. So I had I had asked some advice from the uh, from the creator and got great advice from it, but uh, I think just the lack of experience of playing made it so that I, I I made a couple of mistakes, right? Like I I should have held like a Zolera at one point and waited for him to try to Riku in to get rid of a Bismarck, but instead he got me by untapping the Bismarck with a fat chocobo and Riku, mm. right? Like, so I, I knew to wait and watch for that, but I got too excited in the moment thinking, oh, I'm going to get his Bismarck. I'm going to get it out of here. Yeah. Um, he, he just played it very well. Like uh, game one, he just destroyed me. I couldn't get it set up. You know, the game plan was to get out Scale Toad and then try to get Orphan down eventually, but he got too much value from fat chocobo and I didn't have a setup enough to take him to deck out. Yeah. So he just crushed me. And then game two, uh, I got him. I got Orphan out. I got Scale Toad out. I was getting him to discard. I got rid of two fat chocobos and then the third one, so he didn't have it anymore. But uh, I got him to five damage, and then he got Bismarck and uh, King Ty Tycoon. And he just looped me with King Tycoon and Bismarck, and just he had a one of one of it. So he got it uh, at, at five damage. I had Lightning, and I had uh, um, Biblos out. So like I was going to win, and I was excited and ready to go, but nope, here comes... Here comes uh, Bismarck and King Tycoon, and I was just out. Like he just bounced everything. Oh, yeah. At and that I point, he says, "Do you like playing board. the game? Because you're yeah. not going to anymore." So I lost. Uh, I lost O2. Uh, great player. He made it top four. Um, it was a great experience, though. Like that's that's probably the best finish I've had at a tournament besides like a, a Magic tournament. So I was I was really happy. It was it was a lot of fun too. It was great to see a bunch of people. Like the community is awesome compared to some other card games. Everyone's very helpful. Very nice. Like that's, that's what I'll say. That's what's keeping me in it. This community is just is so awesome around the game. I'm glad you had such a good time. Well, no, congrats to both of you. You definitely earned it. You know, it's funny. I don't know if you've rewatched it. Have you rewatched any of the stream at all? Or I don't know if you watched it live. Um, because uh, you said Josh was his name, the mono win player. Yeah. So he was on stream against, was it the Swarry Avalanche? I think it was. And there were some games where he would get the fat chocobo out and i remember one and the other person was immediately able to go cool amber into shinju into elvis now it's 9k yep. enough to immediately and it's just like good gravy man like that 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 soiree player couldn't have asked for a better opening than that not only did he get three out he immediately kills this fat chocobo threat and, and those are kind of things that maybe i dwell on them i don't want to say i dwell on them but i do consider them that Okay, and that's part of a card game, right? Variance. But what if he doesn't open that? What if he doesn't have that immediate Elvis? What if that fat chocobo gets one more turn to do his thing? How much of a difference does that make in the game? And I'm glad you mentioned Bismarck, too, with that mono wind. I was playing a game with my girlfriend right before this, and she was using the mono wind chocobo deck, and I was kind of teaching her how to do it. And she got to the point where she could do the dull everything for Bismarck, Fat Chocobo Riku, reactivate everything, dull it all again. And I think in, in one turn, on my attack phase, she did like 30,000 total damage to all my forwards. And I was just like, that's just kind of so silly, isn't it? so Bismarck. Yeah, yeah. Bismarck's just it's like, he's that card that just says, okay, do you have an immediate answer? Because otherwise, I'm just going to take over the game at this point. Mm hmm and as a matter of fact, in Ice Earth too, like, yeah, like you said, I don't even know what you really even do about that. Because the Hecaton's not enough to beat it. Oh. Uh, if he's, I guess you could technically Zalira if 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 you're given that window. I don't know if you even are, but well, yeah, not with the fat chocobo out because you always have to worry about Riku. Yeah. And then like he's got the the Finna that you can discard to get rid of. Like if oh, I do yeah. a Titan, the other Titan's not going to be enough damage, right? Yeah. So I've got Chantoto, and then uh, he, he gets out Yustola. What am I going to do there? Like it's it's just very difficult. Like that I I didn't sleep very well the night before trying to think of what am I going to do about Yustola? What am I, what am I going to do about the Finna backup if I want to? Clear the board with a Titan. Yeah. Like, what am I going to do? Um, Sam said it was very winnable, but for me, uh, I don't think I have the experience that he does to to get to that point. Yeah. That's... So I was just happy. I was just happy to play in top sixteen. No, that's that's amazing. So I didn't get to see these matches, so I won't necessarily ask about like what you could have done differently because I didn't see the plays to examine them. But I do want to ask you both about your decks. And Robert, I'll start with you. So you took your decks, you played, you made top sixteen. Awesome. Looking back on them now, as I'm looking over these lists. Is there anything you would have changed? Any cards that, mm, that one actually didn't end up doing much for me, I would swap it out. Robert, what about you? Yeah, the first one, the uh, obvious glaring one that I think probably anyone would see in that is the Ignacio. 
Mm. But I put that in because in my past experience with this deck, I never decked anyone out before mm -hmm. with it. It was it was different. I was always hurting for CP. So I was like, you know what? I need something that I can draw with, which now I know is probably not the right move with this deck. So I would definitely switch that that, that Ignacio. And I was thinking I would put in a Squall, hmm. the uh, Fire yeah, Squall the, Yeah, instead. the Legend one. And my goal with this deck was to have almost every card be able to do damage. And I think I, I would have to look over the list again, but I want to say like 46 of the cards have some kind of damage ability. It's ridiculous. So even the backups, like almost everything does damage except Cooch Aspel, Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> which you have to have for those. Yeah. Which when you run into a Baird or a Riddy or a yeah. Mata Metal or whatever. That's, before, um, when I first built this deck, it had three Mosheries and no Cooch Aspels because Moshery was the option if they had something that couldn't take damage, it would just be returned to hand. But um, since she's gone, now Kushas was the only option left for a mm. deck like this. Who does your um, who does your Axtar search? Is it Ignacio? It's only Ignacio. Oh, okay. His search actually wasn't in there for the search. He's in there for the ES Just for first. the, yeah, trigger the, which makes sense when you have so many summons. I love that you have Bahamut in there. Bahamut's always been my favorite summons. Like, I've played all the Final Fantasy games. I'm a big Final Fantasy nut. Uh, and I've always loved Bahamut, and I love that particular model from 10. But that card's never really seen much play. What made you pick him? Oh, I love that. You're talking about the forward Bahamut, yeah, right? Yeah, the three cost yeah. one. <laughs> He's amazing. Like I don't know why people don't more people don't play him because with a fire summon deck, it's so easy to get three summons in your break zone. So we bring him out. He's a nine k, and it's the field effect. So he can't get you know dumped with an eight. And, yeah. I mean he doesn't really have a trigger, so it's not an Amaterasu thing. But um, I guess on swing they, they can't kill it with Amaterasu. Yeah. Right on swing he does, and so if he's out there for a full turn and you're able to hit that swing, it's fantastic because he's got his 5k when he swings to all their forwards, and if you have another Bahamut in hand, you just dump that, yeah. and you do another 4k, now you're 9k in their board, and that's un almost guaranteed to break everything. Yeah, So that's fair. So other than Ignacio, was there anything else, or were you pretty satisfied with uh, the rest of the selection? Ignacio was like my number one, like definitely get rid of that because that didn't work. Yeah. But um, the other thing that I probably would consider would be that backup Vermilion Bird, let's see. I was going to ask you how effective, I mean, it bumps everything, right? Which that's great, it does. but did it not matter? that's why or? I put it in. I was like, well, maybe I need that 1,000 summon boost. And it can help, but I found that it wasn't very useful over the general use of the games. Most of the time I was discarding it because I needed something else. It wasn't very common for me to actually play it. And although I did on the stream game and I forgot to activate his extra thousand power, but it didn't mm. matter most of the time. So it wasn't like I was 1000 short or I probably would have remembered it was there. Sure. So, uh, and is there anything, so now I'll kind of flip that. Is there anything that you had considered, but you ultimately didn't put in? Uh, when I, one thing that comes to mind as I look at the list is Jin. Now, granted, you're not running as many forwards, which Jin really benefits those forwards. However, just having that first strike surprise blocker that is kind of immune, or not immune to removal, but very tricky to remove. Did him or any other card, like, you're like, oh, I considered I it and you just didn't do it. I did consider Jin. I looked at that and I was like, hmm, it says forwards. And I'm like, I'm probably not going to have very many forwards out. I yeah. can't see it activating very often. I didn't really, for monsters, I don't usually consider their become a forward effect mm. unless it's like amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Because usually the monsters, it's like, okay, either they come to the field or their general like auto ability is what their use is. But Jin is the only of that set forwards that has that first strike, and it's yeah pretty nice. It is pretty nice. I've been hit with it a few times, and I'm like, ooh, that was kind of painful. So it's easy to forget that they're there when you're fighting, too, in the middle of the game. And like, oh, I'm going to have two forwards out. I'm going to swing in at two, hit him for, to three damage. And then I'll swing with my other guy who's a wimp. He's like, oh, I'm going to activate Jin, and you're dead. Yeah. Right, so you get hit with that a lot, especially me because I'm new and I forget stuff like that. So, um, I know I probably sound like a, a real noob because I, how did you get second place in that tournament? But I think it was a surprise factor more than anything. Yeah. People were just like, "Oh, okay, you're, you're playing some fire deck. Maybe you've got a, a Braska build." Nope, it's just blast everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's huge. Have you looked at much from the new set, uh, both of you? I have looked over the list of things. Okay. I have a box on order that I haven't received yet, so I haven't actually opened any uh, anything other than the free, the packs I got from the um, the event. But 
I'm excited about X-Death. That's awesome. by far my most excited card. I know it's not going to get a ton of play, and it has a certain build that really it fits into. Mm -hmm. But um, like I said earlier, I'm I like the Opus Three Neo X or X-Death, yeah. and I plan on building a deck with ten X-Deaths in it, so I can just like. Just, it's going to be amazing. I'm well, so excited. As I go to Michael, I want you to keep in the back of your head, and then, Michael, you'll get your chance, too. If, hypothetical, if Opus 17 had been legal for this tournament, I want you to think about, is there any cards from 17 you would have put in this deck? So while you think about that, Michael, uh, your list, obviously you took this from Sam Prime, but yeah. that doesn't mean you have to keep it exactly the same. Was there anything in here that you felt you just never ended up using, or how'd you feel? What would you have taken out if given the chance? Well, I would add three Mist Dragons if I could have 53, mm -hmm. right? But uh, obviously the card that I'm talking about after that is something I would add now. Um, I mean, I some of my friends changed the list a little bit, added like White Tiger and added Mist Dragon and yeah. added Finrur and stuff like that. But I felt like that was more mid-range and then like that was kind of going to go against the game plan. Like I don't want to attack in with White Tiger that often more than likely because then I'm probably going to make a mistake or I'm not getting more backups in than just like trying to make them discard. Uh, would I change much? Probably not. Like I think as I get... As I get more experience, maybe I would change stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, I trusted in the uh, hundred, the hundred games that he played with it. Like I, I, I consider, it, I guess, uh, backup, backup uh, Ridia to search for a uh, like Cactar or something like that if yeah. I really needed it. So that was something I considered, but I didn't know what to take out, like Geomancer, because I, I do need the breakable thing so I can get out what I need. Yeah. In case later in the game I need to get out like a Unalesca or something like that if I haven't got it early, or like uh, even like make room for Shantoto or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I figured if I got her out, then maybe I couldn't break something. But that, I think that's the only thing that I really considered changing was adding her in because I was worried about not being able to search for anything. Yeah. Miss Dragon is huge. I was very surprised that uh, Sam and Muhammad didn't run it at Omaha. Now, granted, a lot of the, some of those soiree lists just weren't really summon dependent, so maybe it didn't. they didn't need it as much. Uh, but obviously, playing in this event sounds like it would have been pretty useful for you. Well, it, may, it definitely made me discard a lot more. I mean, not, I wanted to discard anyways. With Unaleska to make sure they didn't have enough to uh, play Amaterasu if I was going to mm. Shantoto or something like that. So I had to play around Amaterasu all the time. Yeah. Right. Like if they had if they had two or three in hand, you got to discard once. I got to move to combat and orphan, and I, I got to wait to move to combat before I can orphan. I got to make you discard with Unaleska. Yeah. Yeah. So it definitely made me play around stuff. Yeah, and that's huge. That's a card, yeah, you always have to be cognizant of it. Nothing worse than trying to drop that board wipe just for them to be like, nope, cancel it. You're like, yeah. all right, well, let me just scoop these up and whoop into the dumpster. <laughs> all right, so you think about from the new set then what you would have added, and I want to go back to Michael. Michael, if Opus, or sorry, Robert, Robert, if Opus 17 had been legal, is there anything you would have put in here? I would have probably put in the uh, fire backup that when you tap it, you can um, cert or get a three cost forward out of your break zone and play it to the field. Oh yeah, the samurai backup, gotcha. Yeah, because I don't have very many forwards and that would be a great way to just bring a forward back if I'm hurting for a forward all of a sudden. Yeah, that's true. Which And, and that's perfect because I could get Bahamut, your favorite card. Well, that one uh, only targets standard units though. However, oh, the right. there is the four cost samurai that that will get any fire forward of four or less. Obviously a bit perfect. more expensive, but uh, was there anything it, else or just that one is what you're thinking of? That's the first one that came to mind. I would have to see the list in front of me sure. to think anything else. Maybe the Bahamut Summon, maybe. Yeah. Um, the, like since Bahamut. you could split it up, that seems perfect yeah. for your deck since you're doing I really it. like that Bahamut because I was thinking play Blaze and then play Bahamut and you're 10Kng two things. Yeah. So that's guaranteeing going to kill two things pretty much. Um, did you ever but, have any consideration for like a Susano as a board wipe or did you feel, eh, I can control the board plenty well with all the summons? When I showed people locally in my deck list, they're like, why do you not play Susano? Wouldn't that make sense? And I said, well, I don't have a lot of backups, and I yeah. almost feel like I don't want to lose a backup if I get it to the field. And I tried to play Susano in it when I, in my original build that I had played with my daughter, and I almost always had the situation where I didn't have a backup on the field, and then I have Susano in hand. And yeah. it's like, oh, that's useless now. Yeah. Yeah, Philia would have just been better for you at that point. Oh, that's fair. I appreciate that insight. All right, Mike, what about you? If, if Opus 17 had been legal, is there anything else, is anything you would have put in? First one would be Edward. Ah, yeah. I would get Edward immediately so that I can just mess up anything that's going on in their break zone. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Matoya, and then I probably would also add in Duke just for uh, surprise. Like, any like back attack seems like it's so good. I wish there was more back attack stuff. Mm -hmm. Just in other games, having the, the, the flash or in, instant ability that, that catches someone off guard and they always have to watch for it means that maybe they're not going to attack in. Right? Like they're not gonna attack me with the Bismarck if they think maybe I'm holding up like a a Duke or something like that. 
I wonder, so you said that, and again, I know you both said you've only been playing for about a year, but I, I would love to get your insight on this. So, back attack is a keyword. It seems like they've struggled to make a great forward that uses it. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we don't want a great forward yeah. that can back attack, but there is this Sephiroth in Opus 10. He could back attack in. He could dull something out of the way. The Duke can obviously, ha, ah, surprise, I blocked you. You know, we both die. Scarmaglione from Opus 13 kind of did that too. He would block choose something okay it's going to take double damage i've got first strike i wonder I, i'd be curious to just have both your thoughts on this what do you think it is about back attack that they've really struggled to make like well this is the card you always play do you think because when i as i'm pondering it like is it just too telegraphed is it that well i've got to leave up backups or you know i'm still paying something out of hand so i don't know what, what about it to you two do you uh, and we can start with robert what do you think well <laughs> Um, like you said, back attack's very limited. There's not a lot of cards with it. Um, the only card I've ever played with back attack is the Sephiroth. Mm. And, or no, sorry, and Scarmiglione, because I play, when I play title, I play title four. Oh, okay, and nice. Love Scarmiglione um, in that. But he, like you said, it doubles damage, but he's only a 3K. So yeah. he can only hit for six. So if he's blocking something more than six, he's still dead. So it's it's unfortunate that he's so weak that he can easily be killed like that. I kind of wish, um, there's that Noel that was from, I think, Opus 15 or 16, that was when he blocks, he deals 6k to yeah, the okay. forward that he's blocking. I wish it was something more like that on a back attack card, where you play the card, when he blocks, he does extra damage. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily double damage, but a set amount. And I think that would be a better build around. But like you said, I think if they build a great back attack card, it's going to go in every deck, and then it's yeah. going to get banned. So I think they have to be careful because it's such a strong thing to add in like that. Yeah. Michael, any thoughts? Yeah, it'll it'll be too strong. So like calling out another card game, imagine Renoa with back attack. Yeah. That That is what Restoration Angel is in Magic. As soon as I saw Renoa, I was like, this is like my favorite card. I wish it had a back attack. Being able to block with something and then flash it in and remove that thing out of the way so it doesn't die, but yeah. you still block that damage. And then you get whatever the trigger ability is when it comes back into play. That would be too strong, but that's what they would need to actually make for pro people probably, to probably play it. And I think Duke will get played just because it's that surprise of, hey, his, the board's empty, but is he holding up 2 CP? Like, 2 CP is so little. Is yeah. he holding up 2 CP to, to really mess it up? Do I have something to answer it? Do I want to trade, like, something that costs 3 to 4 CP for something that only costs 2? Yeah. Right? Like, or do I do I even attack in? So, I, I think it would be too strong if they, if they added on something that was playable. In Magic, when you block an attack, is it like in Final Fantasy where it's blocked no matter what happens or can you yes. actually okay so you can't remove so it's the like they meet on the field and even if he leaves he's already been blocked gotcha i was gonna say if that wasn't the case then you i think you could make a renoa flash a card yeah. because if the guy leaves it's like oh well, he's not blocking anymore so i've gone through for an attack now so but obviously those aren't the rules so hmm, who cares about that? like imagine like a a, a flash renoa or a back attack renoa on like a thing crate or something like that and they yeah. don't have an answer yeah, that, like that's that's the insane thing. Yeah, that, those re-entry effects are, are absolutely brutal. Were there any other decks there that you saw that really stood out to you that you kind of wanted to mention or that gave people trouble? I know you mentioned the Neo-X death one. That sounded kind of crazy. Anything else? I guess I, I, I really like the, uh, the Avalanche uh, Swarry list. Like, that was interesting. I hadn't seen that before. I'm sure maybe it was floating around, but it seemed like it, it messed up people up to where they didn't know what to expect. Like, even against uh, a Josh with the win, right? Like, he didn't read... Um, he didn't read one of the cards. Which card was it? Uh, he didn't read one of the cards that, that gives them a boost when they attack for a thousand. Oh, Tifa. It's, uh, yeah. Tifa. Yeah, Tifa. I was thinking you, Tifa. He didn't read Tifa, so like that really yeah. messed him up. Or, Everybody like, always so forgets that. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone always forgets that effect. Well, and, and that was uh, the way it mashed them both together. And luckily, they're both kind of in the same elements. You know, Earth is their primary for both of them, so that works. When I started playing back in Opus 8, one of my favorite combinations was Scions of the Seventh Dawn, which didn't have enough Scions to fill the entire deck out, so I used the Warriors of Darkness to supplement, because they were also Earth and Lightning, they were the same elements. And it was kind of an interesting deck, because similar to at least what I saw on stream from, I think his name was Ray, who ended up winning the whole thing, you got this play of like, you just go into whatever side you draw. I'm drawing the soiree. Okay, it's soiree time. Oh, here are the avalanche. All right, avalanche time. So it was a really neat uh, marriage. And to see the cloud, you know, you don't see the haste option come out of him too often. It's usually nuke something, revive from the break zone. But to see him be like, revive, whole field's haste. Doot, 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 doot. See ya. 
well, day one, if you surprise somebody and like they get them to damage six, and they're like, oh, I've got this next turn. Yeah. And he just drops it like he did in that one game. And you're just like, how do I get back out of that? Like, this is insane. Like, yeah, that was great. Search Cloud, play him. Okay. So speaking of that, Robert, I wanted to ask you, did you see the. Oh, I just had it. What was the list? I like just had it. In my... Oh, the Black Waltz list. That one did really well. I think that's what made uh, second place. Uh, it was surprising because usually Black Waltzes don't do well against Soiree, but it sounds like maybe there weren't quite as many Soiree. Did you play against it? Did one of you play against that list on stream? Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. I did not play against the the Lightning. He had the Field of Thanos in his deck, right? I think so. Yeah, I don't yeah, think I ever I saw, saw it that, hit the field, I but I think he did have list, it. And that was actually the deck I was most scared of because I have nothing that's cost five or more. So mm. I would have been totally screwed. <laughs> yeah, you would have had to rely on Amaterasu. It's kind of your only yep. way out of that. Uh, what about you, Mike? I, I didn't play against it either. Okay. I didn't see it all day. I was happy to see that one succeed. And I was trying to... It, again, it was it was weird because I was like, well, why is this doing so well at this tournament? You know, it hasn't shown up at any of the others. D did we underrate it as the players? Was it just, hey, this was just the right day for it and it was running hot? And I, I always get curious about that. Maybe you have some experience from Magic when I watch these tournaments is, you know, if you ran these 100 times, what would the results be? Sometimes it does feel like, I don't think that deck's actually that great. I think it just ran hot today and it got the right matchups and da-da-da-da-da. And then other times, oh, no, 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 maybe it is that great. So any insight from either of you on that being there? Robert? Okay, I'll try. Um, I agree that... Now, the reason I say this is because every re-raise that I've, I've watched the final standings on, mm -hmm. nobody has the same deck. Yeah. Right? It's, it's not like every time Suarez win or every time you see Pal and Porum in the top four or whatever. Like It's it's always something different. In, in the Florida one, it was Ice Fire Knights. And everybody's like, what? Five Knights? Yeah. How did this work? And I think that it's a lot of situational luckiness yeah. for the, the players. And it's skill. So it's either skill in building your deck or skill in knowing how to play your deck. Mm -hmm. or to, And the way... I look at it for me being new to this and new to understanding how to, the responses and when you have priority. That has killed me many times because I don't know when I can respond or when yeah. I should respond. And once players get to the experience level where they are good at understanding priority, that's when they get good. And that's that's really the difference. You can take the top deck and try to play it and be terrible at it because you don't understand priority. Yeah. And it's all about, that's the key to winning in Final Fantasy, in my opinion. Some, some of these decks I see run, I'm just like, that wouldn't work for me. Like, if I tried to do <laughs> Avalanche Soiree, it would somehow, I would just draw, like, just enough of each one so I couldn't actually play it either. It doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. When I played against that Avalanche Soiree deck, it was hilarious because he played uh, backup... Uh, Jesse, mm -hmm. first turn, and then he played Barrett for free, the starter Barrett. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, no one plays the starter Barrett, but yeah. okay, Avalanche, he's he's going to try something new. All right, cool. And then next turn, he plays Madame Adele, and I about fell out of my chair. Yeah. I said, what is going on here? <laughs> so you just go, Judge, we, we what? can't allow Are this. You, this is not right. I need someone to allow. <laughs> no, I'm glad you mentioned about the rules and like knowing priority and how important that is. At the Omaha re-raise, there was a few matches I took off of people that I actually knew their cards better than they did. Uh, I was playing the mill loop list. So with Zidane, I would steal some of their cards. I remember I stole White Tiger, let's see Nimbus from someone, which is, what a steal. <laughs> You're like, thank you. What a steal. <laughs> and he's not like color locked by me. It's like, no big deal. Just tap the back, let's play him out. And the guy who was playing it didn't realize that he dole froze characters. He thought it was just forward. So he was like, oh, my Biblo, so protect me because it's a monster. I was like, all right, let's dole He's like, no, it's forward. So I was like, mm -mm. It says characters right here. So yeah, that's uh, knowledge is such a huge part of it that knowing, again, the Tifa example you mentioned that knowing that that pushes them to nine, you know, in a casual, maybe your friend will let you take that back because he didn't know, but in a tournament, it's like, you blocked. Like, it's not my right, fault. Man. You didn't know it was, you know, bumped, so. Yep. Yeah, I had a guy play, what was it that he played? He did something where he hit my forward for 8K, but it was the Bahamut with the 2K boost. Uh, and he's like, okay, so he's dead, right? I'm like, no, he's a, he's a nine. He's like, oh no, and that hurt him bad mm -hmm. too. Yep, I can make a huge Burn difference. Burn all that CP and then don't get the result you're thinking, like, yeah. Ooh. So tell me about both of you, and we'll go to Mike first. Tell me about Epic Gaming, the store. I didn't get to see it in person. Looked like a nice place from the couple photos I have. How did they run the event? Were you happy with it? Anything you'd improve upon? What parts did you love? Give me the breakdown. It was it was a great store. Um, so we're about 
35, 40 minutes from it. So we're right on the other side of the water in Washington. So okay. it's down in Portland. So we go down there once in a while, especially for big tournaments. Uh, it's a little bit bigger. They do a great job with video. Like nice. they have a video setup that's awesome. Usually they'll do like Sunday night Final Fantasy and stuff like that for just like locals. Yeah. But the the event, it, it, it ran well. Like it, it started like a, probably a couple minutes late. So we're like, oh man, is this going to be like a long day or something like that? But no, like they, they kept they kept on pace. We had a, a shorter break for, for dinner. And we were out of there probably about like seven, seven, nice. seven thirty. So it was like one to one to seven, seven thirty. So it was pretty good. Yeah, so like you guys, staff were great. you guys started quite late because I remember I checked yeah. in at noon or what would be two p.m. my time. I was like, this thing hasn't started yet. Like, oh man, how long is it going to be? But yeah, it seems like it was really smooth. Sorry, please continue. That, that's awesome. Yeah, it was great. The staff's great. Like we've we've met and talked to them before. Um, so I can't say anything better. Like they're it's a great store. Uh, I wish it was closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Robert, you were on stream. Uh, in addition to whatever else you say, tell me about like the headsets they have you wear when you're on the stream match. Because I've seen some of their like Sunday night local play before, and in those videos, I could hear the players. I don't know if they muted that so we could hear the commentators. Or but can you tell me about that. They must have muted it. Now I have to say, I I've never done a stream before. It was my first one ever, mm. and it was all new for me. But I put that headset on. It was like noise canceling headset, and all I could hear was my opponent. And we could nice. talk to each other. It was perfect. I was like, wow, we should do this for every game. This is amazing. Yeah. He was complaining because he thought he could hear the commentators in the background, like in the headset. Oh, really? But I can't hear fantastic. So uh. I was like, I don't hear it at all. <laughs> well, w were they physically there? Or was he saying their feed was coming through or what? The feedback, yeah. Because oh, okay. the commentators that we had were actually remote. No one in, oh, the, okay. in the store was doing the commentary. It was... Um, I can't remember Kyle. It Peters, was Kyle right? Peters and Sam Tool. Yeah, they both did it. Yeah, but they were they were remote. They weren't there. Okay, but he. Oh, yeah. you're saying he thought maybe he could hear it through the headset. Yeah, I did when I was at Legendary Wolf Games maybe two years ago now. One year, I, I when I was doing like an on stream talk, it was like I was echoing myself through my heads, and so Ooh, like I couldn't even worse. wear it because I was just hearing myself talking in real time. But the noise canceling, like you said sounds really nice i've never gotten to do that and maybe you too experience this too sometimes with these tournaments people finish early and they'll come watch your table so like you oh, can yeah. tell they're all there so yeah that must be nice to help you just focus on the game it was the music too right was yeah it? actually yeah it, i oh, forgot about that it, they, there was they played some like i think it was just uh the overland uh walking music from final fantasy 7 just nice. in the background constantly it was it was real quiet but just like a little bit of background noise it was yeah. fantastic that's awesome. I was like, man, I should wear these all day. Like, this is visually, awesome. I love their setup. You know, it was very clear on both sides. Their real time, um, like HUD elements, were updated. So, really enjoyed watching. I'm glad it was a pleasant experience being there as well. Yeah, right. I really like their store. They, the, 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 the people there are great. They're they're fantastic. I would recommend to anyone. They're they're fantastic. They really support Final Fantasy and other games. They actually do the. I don't know what's called fighting games tournament as well. Okay. Uh, where you play the like, you know, Smash Brothers, stuff like that. Yeah. And they are big into that as well. And the, yeah, the staff is amazing. They're they're fantastic. And so you're visiting too, tax free in Oregon. Great place to pick up some cards. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Is there anything else you want to mention about the re raise of the store? I can't I can't wait for the next tournament. I'm hoping that there's something like maybe PAX West or something like that or ready to start training for, or practicing for the next one. Supposedly, there's one in San Diego, right? It's coming up. I think so. Was it San Diego or was it LA? I can't remember. Well, the, the the people from San Diego were saying, you're coming to San Diego, right? Like, trying to talk everybody up mm -hmm. to coming. But it sounds like there's a conflict at the is same Is it the weekend. light? Is it like the light yeah. tournament or is it? Okay. Well, no, well, the light is putting on a conference. Yeah, and um, I, th I think that one's in LA because I think Greg is, which in, is LA. in LA. He hosts but it's it. the same. It's supposed to be the same weekend as the San it's Diego this, okay, tournament. Okay, and the other one's the San Diego tournament. And mm -hmm. so there's a little bit of a. Uh, yeah. Know, the, <laughs> they don't like that they're so close together and there's both big Final Fantasy events in the same weekend. Yeah. So I don't know how that's going to turn out. I don't know if they're going to move it or what. But. A, a good question. We'll have to find out. So Opus 17. What are you looking forward to? What do you want to play? Mike, hit me with the details. So it's Matoya and Edward. Uh, I, I don't oh, know. No, like no, my, sorry, my... sorry. It doesn't have to be like in reference to this deck. Like just what's like a new deck what you want to play? I'm going to try out the Scions deck. Um, I've been talking to uh, Gulo too about a couple of decks. Oh, and yeah. like, he has some he recommendations. And... Those Scions. <laughs> so I, I mean, I picked up uh, Yishtola um, yesterday. It's, it's already it's already going up 16 Yishtola. So get it while you can. Yeah. Right. Um, interested in playing that. Uh, I don't really know what else. Like my favorite deck was pre Doga uh, Sophie uh, Sophie Lina Ursula, right? Like just the constant like getting stuff back. Like I really like that deck. So I want to find something kind of like that. I love recursion. 
You, I guess until I start getting hit too much with Mist Dragon and the Matoyas and stuff like that, you know, and Edwards. You dirty degenerate and Doga yeah. lover. <laughs> well, I didn't know. I liked it before Doga. Like, I wish Doga never happened so that maybe the banning wouldn't have happened so fast. Like, I just like the, the value, like, bringing back twos and everything. Oh, yeah. Sarah and Sophie. Yeah. Oh, it's, I, hey, man, I played it too. It's fun to play. Yeah. It just sucks for your opponent. Uh, Robert, yeah. what about you? I have to say, like I said earlier, X-Death is my boy, so I am definitely going to run an X-Death deck. I'm trying to consider if I want to go Mono Lightning or Earth Lightning, just so I can add Matoya in as well, as another way to remove cards from the game. So, we'll see. I'm not sure if it's going to be Earth, Earth Lightning or Mono Lightning, but it's it's going to be Lightning, and I'm going to I'm gonna find a way to make Lightning good, because it sucks, and I gotta find a way to get that in the meta. Robert, or Mike, do you agree? Does Lightning suck? Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I think the very first deck that I built was uh, Water Lightning that had won, like, a tournament. And then, like, I tried it and just got destroyed. But I think it was, like, right as the uh, a new set came out. What about you? Are you going to... I can't wait for the, the uh, six deck tech, right? Like, I, I know, love some of the cards for six. That's the one I've been playing with first. And I just built three or four more today that... Uh, very rarely do I build one that just right out of the gate. I'm like, oh, this is great. I think my 10 Guardians was one of the few that that worked with. Usually, it's like, it starts as an idea. Uh, one of the ideas is this water ice earth mix do sophie do celestia do white tiger do all these good cards and do gentiana and the dual horn the new guy the ninja guy mark here because he makes their forwards enter dull so if they're dull and gentiana's on the field they don't have any effects even if they have auto abilities they just don't trigger so like i'm messing around with something like that i want to try some ninjas samurais although samurai seems very straightforward like i'm not going to innovate anything on that uh but yeah six i really want to try and testing it's just not as good as like the Glaciella package with the crystals just because of the way Edward's designed. But man, a, a six was the first game I ever played as well when I was a kid. So to see all that Amano art lined up in a row, is just like, oh, it just bring, warms my heart. I love it. Okay. So the, you, you mentioned this topic. So I got to ask now, why does lightning suck? Why does it suck? And we'll because start with I can't Robert. find a way to win with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's technically an answer. <laughs> Uh, so I try, I've tried to rush with lightning and you get two or three damage first turn. And you're like, yes, I'm way ahead. I'm crushing it. And then they hit a couple EX bursts and you lose all your forwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. That happens. And then, so now you have, let's say nothing on board and you just wasted all your CP, but you hit them for some damage, but then they build up their board and it takes you a while to get back in to hit anything. Um, I have had a little bit of success with one card from lightning which is going to sound funny I, and please don't anyone kill me it's the assassin and it is my favorite forward ever because the assassin is just a 2k but when she attacks it dole a two two cost on the other side and that card has won me a few games because of that effect hmm. i can dole any two cost on their side and they can't block with it and it, you know it sounds like nothing but there's so many two costs out there now that are part of the meta that it's it's just funny to do that and be like, ha, huh, I just beat you with this common, you know, lightning yeah. card. And I'll say there's a lot of cards that just dull anything. So the fact that you're right. going in on that, that's funny. I love that. <laughs> Mike, what about you? Any thoughts on why lightning sucks? I mean, it seems like it hasn't, it doesn't have an identity as much as the other ones. Like, you don't look, like I can't look at lightning and say exactly as a new player what exactly it's going to do. Like, it dulls stuff, I guess, kind of. I need to have stuff dull to be able to break it and, like, all these things that I have to do before I get to do something. Whereas, like, earth, it's like, just break it. Right? Like, so I'm just going to play earth or something like that and then water just bounce something or, like, water, earth, like, break it or, and then bounce or, like, return to someone's deck. Like, that seems a little bit easier to understand. Um, and then, like, we just haven't seen a lot of the, uh, the 15 deck here or anything like that. So like no, no one really plays it around us. So you never really get to see a strong lightning deck. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're playing title or something. King's Glaives was at the tournament and it made it okay. pretty high up there. Was it, I don't know if it's top four, maybe it was top eight. I know it was in the top cut somewhere because I remember seeing it on the stream on day two. And I have to admit, I don't know if either of you two are, I was a little baffled because I personally am just underwhelmed by that deck. Maybe I don't give it enough credit. Clearly it, it made its mark there and it got that high, but yeah, that one's always just seemed kind of like, I mean, it's cute, but eh, I don't know. It <laughs> just, just seems so... The, eh. Yeah, the hard, the hard thing I have with Lightning is finding backups that are decent. That's, that's my biggest complaint about Lightning, because it feels like there's so many backups, let's say in Wind, that mm -hmm. are just good backups. Always. They're always good, no matter what build you have. Sometimes, you, like Althea. Like, yeah. That's just a great backup. And in Lightning, like, let's see. Let's think about great backups in Lightning. Okay, I no, there's nothing. 
that's like just, yes, every lightning deck plays this. The only card that I found that I want to put in every lightning deck that's a backup is the new Reeve backup because he mm -hmm. can draw me out a two cost out of my break zone and play it to the field. That's something, but it's still not great because now I also have the downside of Reeve, which is he doesn't activate until that guy goes away. So it's good, except they made it bad. And it's like some of those cards in Lightning, I feel like are like, hey, the first part of the text is great. Oh, and we put this restriction on and now it sucks. So, so it's, um, I don't know if they just don't like Lightning or or they're like, oh, Lightning should never play backups. Everyone should play Dragoons if they're going to play Lightning. And, and that's, I mean, they're, they're just puts it into a hole and there's no other options like i want to have cool good backups in lightning that i can play for any lightning deck where i'm like yeah i, I want that to do in almost all of my lightning decks that would make sense mm -hmm. that's fair mike anything to add to that i think uh, the first like thing that i really picked up uh before building a deck was the uh the shadow bringers uh set yeah and it's what it's uh, scions and it's lightning. Um, lightning. So I remember because I was like I played it once and I was like I'm not gonna play this. I'm just gonna play the the fire the fire deck. Like it just beats every single time. Like, yeah. Um. I don't know. It just doesn't seem that good. Now I do. All right. So I'll say a card that I wish was was good is uh, innocence, not lightning. Yeah. Right. Like but I like to play card, innocence yeah. again. <laughs> so that was in the deck with her. Right? Like that was the one thing I noticed. I was like, oh, that's actually pretty cool. Innocence. Let me see if I can play that. But yeah. well, I think Titania. Actually, I think it was it was lightning ice, wasn't it? Well, the villain side was fire ice, and then the fire, hero okay. side was lightning that. earth. So I can't remember which one the innocence was in. He was in the villain side, yeah. He was with the fire okay. and the ice cards. Because okay. he has uh, fire and ice as his payment requirements for his action gotcha. oh, yeah. if he gets there. My so friend it's... Sawyer has been trying to make that card work for a while, and you know it it just always does the same thing. It's innocence. It's what it is. <laughs> It's like one of the best cards. I'll go back to Magic. Like in Magic, Liliana the Veil. That's what it feels like, where you can just do so many things and just destroy them if you can get it out. But then it, uh, that was before I realized how much good removal there was, too. Yeah. So I think as a new player, getting like one of those starter decks, I don't know. But uh, I think uh, so. The decks I really liked playing before this, if we go back to that instead of Lightning, was like the uh, Steve Dolman Mill. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you played that when it was out. And then so Robert got into Guardians with this last set that came out and destroyed me with like Guardians because I couldn't keep up with the Mill deck and I just started losing. So that's when I had to switch to something else. Yeah. Yeah, the mill is great. Well, gentlemen, those are all the questions I had for you. Was there anything in particular you wanted to mention before we wrap up here? Let's do another re-raise. Like, yeah. come down. Big tournaments, Crystal Cup. Like, get it. Ma make it happen. I will get there. Yeah. Thanks so much for having us on. Like, I'm I'm, I'm glad that uh, you were interested in having us. Thanks. Oh, uh, thank you for reaching content. out. Thank you. I, I genuinely appreciate that. Well, folks, we'll wrap up here. Uh, I'm grateful to have Robert Joy as well as Mike Peterson on the stream with me today. Give me some thoughts on their re-raise uh, experience. Sounds like it was absolutely great. Next one coming up is in Pennsylvania, if I'm not mistaken, in September. And then I think there's one in Canada in October. And I believe the San Diego one is in November, I think. Because whatever the weekend, uh, Greg Cole and the Light are doing the Alex Hancock's weekend. Uh, it's currently scheduled for that. Might not get switched. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Nonetheless, boys, thank you for both being on here. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Let us know what you thought of Re-Raise, and let me know what you're looking forward to in Opus 17. And until next time, we'll see you later. Take care.